this looks like a job for Superman. Hey everybody, Rez the Collector here with another Superman action figure review. Today we're taking a look at the Elseworlds figures, Superman Red Sun and Superman President Red Sun. I decided to do these reviews together because it is basically the same uh, Elseworlds figure, just in different stages of that awesome uh, Elseworlds comic. Now, now if you've never read Red Sun, uh, I highly recommend going out, uh, either finding the the uh, compilation somewhere, getting it off Amazon, what have you. But it is an amazing story, and I'm not going to do any spoilers here uh, for those of you who haven't read it. But if you haven't, it's it's an amazing Superman story. Uh, it's uh, of course, like I said, in Elseworlds, it's almost like a what if, uh, and not really a spoiler here. But it's basically what if Superman had landed in Russia instead of Kansas and what would his life have been like uh, with that dramatic change. Uh, of course there are still some inherent things, uh, inherent nobility, but uh, definitely uh, a game changer for Superman to have landed in Soviet Russia uh, instead of you know Midwest America. Now like I said we're gonna go ahead and do both figures in this review because uh, I thought it appropriate just to, you know, the younger and the older, each figure, uh, of course, has a classic look to it. But uh, we're going to start with the younger version, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and move uh, Mr. President out of the way. And let's bring forward the young version of Superman. Got to make sure we've got as nice of an image as possible. Uh, just starting with the look of the figure, I love the look of this figure. I love how they incorporated uh, the USSR, the Russia uh, sickle and hammer, uh, into the S shield. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, I love that they made the belt much bigger, but still kept the oval in there. Uh, I love the color scheme that they went with. He still got that beautiful red cape, but uh, the rest of the suit, of course, is uh, done in grays and blacks. I'm just going to tilt this down, so I apologize for the shakiness. Uh, you can see that uh, the boots are still there, standard Superman boots. Uh, of course, just in that new color scheme. And, of course, the, uh, the standard undies, again, in the new color scheme. Uh, I love everything, basically, about this figure. Uh, it was an amazing sculpt. It's amazingly done. I, I can't get over how great this figure was. It was a figure I wanted in my collection for a very long time and I actually got him off uh, eBay for a decent price and he was in package and for the longest time uh, he just sat in my display case in package because I didn't know if I was going to open him or not. Uh, I had actually decided not to when I picked up President Superman and I got him loose and I didn't... It got to my OCD to have one in package and one loose and since I couldn't take the loose one and magically put it in a package I ended up opening up the packaged one, and they look fantastic together. Um, I've got them on one of my risers in my display case, and uh, one the one is in front of the other, of course, on the different levels, and they just they look fantastic together. Now, the look he has here is a big, bulkier Superman. It very much reminds me uh, the face and the, the body, and he may have even done the art for it. I, I didn't look it up before I started this review. But it's very much an Alex Ross looking Superman, very much in the face, very much in the way the body is sculpted. Uh, now, one thing I did particularly notice about the Superman and I love is the lines that are used. You can see uh, here on the chest uh, and then going down into the ab muscles. These are very distinct lines that they're using very uh angular you know we, we don't have a much of a rounding i mean there is a rounding there but not like you would see in a normal superman figure uh it's just uh, that nice straight kind of cut line and then again here here in the abs uh the way that the abs get bigger uh, as they go up towards the the chest muscles uh very very good uh sculpting on this figure uh, again, here with the ribs and going down into the belt. Uh, the sculptor of this, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of my friends will know who it is. I'm not sure. Could be a Bruckner, but uh, it's a fantastic sculpture. Uh, it's an amazing representation of the artwork in the Red Sun comic. 
Uh, I love that face. It's very uh, stern, very, uh, very much makes you think of the Iron Curtain. And of course, it's one of my reviews, so he did fall over. Uh, now, this particular figure came with uh, both a stand, a standard like an Elseworld stand that said Red Sun on it. Uh, and then, of course, he came with the red and yellow Russian flag. Uh, of course, we can see that here with the hammer and sickle on it. Uh, so, of course, in the display case, I do have him holding the flag. Now, one thing I do wish I had, I wish I had the four set that came with the, uh, the Bizarro. Uh, from the Red Sun, which was an amazing figure as well. Unfortunately, I have not been able to pick him up. Uh, I am still looking for him for, as a loose figure because I don't want to pick up the four pack because I've already got the, the Superman from it. So I'm definitely looking for that as a loose figure and I hope to get him someday. I'm sure I will. Because that is an am amazing Bizarro. Uh, he's got a, a different chest emblem as well. It says US instead of that Russian uh, sickle and hammer. Uh, so yeah, like I was saying, this reminds me very much of an Alex Ross uh, Superman in the body style, uh, the cuts, just the, the way the figure was done. It was done when they were doing uh, those figures that had very little articulation and looked more statuesque. Uh, and that's what definitely what this figure screams to me is statuesque. Um, I mean, you can move his arms. He's got ball-jointed arms. Uh, he's standing, got a standard swivel head. There's not a ball-jointed head. Uh, you can definitely get some good poses out of him, but this is a figure that's basically meant to be in that museum pose. This is a figure that uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of great posing out of, mostly. Uh, you're going to get some good poses maybe out of the arms and the head. The legs, the way they move, it's not great for posing, uh, at least like standing on anything or stairs or anything like that. Uh, because of the way the legs move and the way that they're angled, it's not going to work like that for this figure. Uh, and that's fine. He looks just fantastic just standing there uh, with that flag and in that museum pose. Uh, now, I, we've already talked about some of the colors, but the colors really pop out on this figure. Because of the gray and the black uh, tones, the colors that we do have, like that red and that chest symbol, you can just see how well that just pops off that chest. Uh, it's just beautifully done because everything else on it is so subtle. All we've got is the red cape, uh, the parts of the symbol, and that belt, and everything else is just gray, black, and of course flesh tone. So it really makes all of those little details pop off of this, this figure amazingly. I also like that it almost looks like it's a, a tight uh, sweater or something when you get down to the sleeves because you can see that these are almost like just standard sleeves and uh, it's got like a lining on it. You can see the wrinkling coming up into the sleeves. It's just amazingly done. Uh, and again, I can't get over how great that head sculpt is. I mean, you can see how prominent the cheekbones are uh, and that severe looking uh, eyebrow and that just amazingly just a parted hair and that wonderful uh, S curl coming off the top. Now when we do a full 360 of this you can see how amazing the cape is. It's blowing in the wind going off to the side. Now this version does not have uh, any symbol on the back of his cape. But uh, it is just an amazing figure overall. Uh, it's one that I highly recommend any Superman fan have. And again, I highly recommend reading that story if you haven't done so. Let's take a quick look at articulation. Uh, as I said, he's just got a straight, just back and forth head. So, I mean, you're not going to get a lot out of it, but, I mean, you can really get the uh, the cool looks with him looking at the flag and kind of looking off to the side, you know, in that kind of red sun image. Uh, we do, of course, have ball-jointed shoulders. And we've got some decent movement out of those, uh, but we have no bicep swivel. We, of course, have got an elbow bend, and we do have a wrist swivel. There's no ab crunch or rotation to speak of. Uh, and I, as I was saying, with the leg movement, you can see how kind of awkward he is to stand the way that leg bends. So he definitely looks much better uh, just in that standard museum pose. And as you're seeing here, he doesn't have any kind of... Uh, rotation here at the thigh. He's just simply got a, a knee bend and no ankle rockers. So that is fantastic. Definitely a figure that's meant to be kept in this museum pose. Definitely a figure that stands out in your collection 
Uh, he's easy to find. You walk into a collection room and you look around and you see all the blues and the reds and all of this. And then he just kind of pops out of the crowd and it's fantastic to see. Excuse me, I just kind of need a drink of water. So definitely a figure to have in your collection. Uh, if you can find that multi-pack that's got the Bizarro in it, I would pick that up in a heartbeat. I know it's going for a lot of money nowadays, uh, but uh, to have both of those together would be amazing, and I am still hoping that at some point I can pick up a loose Bizarro. All right, that about does it for this figure. Let's take a look at his older counterpart. Now, this was an eBay purchase. Uh, he again came with a stand. The only thing on him is when I got him, the way the guy had packed him, his S-curl had actually broken off. Now, I've glued that back on, but I didn't do the greatest job. As you can see, I have large hands, and this was delicate work. And I asked my wife for a pair of tweezers, uh, and of course, she didn't have an extra pair of crappy tweezers to give me, and she wouldn't give me her good tweezers. So I ended up having to try to do this. It just, it wasn't good. So I, I'm not real happy with how I got that glued on there, but it is at least on there and I'm not going to lose it. Uh, so there's that. Now, as you can see, this is an older version of Superman. Uh, this is called the President Superman figure. Uh, and as you can see, there's some distinctive differences between the younger version and the older version. The older version... Uh, looks more stooped, as if the, the weight of the world is kind of crushing him down. And, of course, if you read the comics, you can, you can get a feel for how difficult things are for him. Uh, trying to basically run the world uh, and keep everyone in line. And it's not an easy thing for him, because he still is, inherently, he still is Superman. He's still the good guy. Even though he's had to do some really craptastic things... Uh, he still has that heart in him, that, that Superman that we all know and love. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there were some variations done to the costume, uh, going from the younger uh, hero of the, uh, the Russian people to actually being their leader. Uh, one of the most distinctive changes, of course, is making that face look older. We've still got those severe eyebrows, but they've gone even more severe. They're lower and closer to the eye. It gives the eyes a much darker and almost, uh, I would say, haunted to me. It's almost a haunted look. Uh, so definitely we've got some good changes in that face, but it's still the same guy. You can tell going from this younger version to this version that's had so much stress put on him uh, that it's just that, that older version of that very same man. Uh, we can see here he wears a collar in this version uh, with the two golden stars on it. Uh, and then that goes back down into that standard red cape. Uh, of course, this one is coming much closer to the center of the chest instead of being out towards the shoulders like the younger version. Uh, he's a lot less defined in this older version, especially when it comes down to, like, say, the ab muscles. But I love the way they did it. I love the way that this is, uh, you know, a shirt that isn't skin tight on him. And you can see the wrinkles in there. I mean, you still got the big pec muscles, um, but... It's not skin tight. You can see the wrinkles. And that is another thing that kind of denotes his age. You know, that this costume isn't the skin tight thing that he was wearing before. Uh, that it shows that, you know, a more mature, wrinkled guy. You know, this, this is him years later. This is him uh, that's had all this weight put on him. And he's still standing strong. But as you can see, that there's a difference between determination here and almost sadness here. Now we can see that the symbol on the chest has changed as well. Uh, not a lot, basically just in coloring. Uh, the hammer and sickle is not as bright and the background is a much lighter gray to go with this costume opposed to the darker gray of this one. Uh, we've added some large black gloves to this. Uh, the belt has of course changed. Uh, the two side portions of the belt buckle are gone. Uh, it is a solid piece instead of uh, being broke apart uh, with the little yellow or gray uh, strands here that's like loops going on the belt. And of course we've got a small 
symbol there in the belt buckle that is uh, an identical one to the one on the chest having the hammer and sickle in it. Uh, as you can see here, the underwear is completely gone. He's just wearing gray pants. And again, we've got that wrinkling in here. Uh, the legs much more defined than the chest area. But again, it, it's, it's an older man that, you know, it, I wouldn't say past his prime, but yeah, you get what I mean. We've, I've already gone over. I'm not going to keep going. He's like beating a dead horse. And of course, to match those gloves, we've got these nice, uh, shiny, like rubber leather boots. Uh, so very cool look for him here. Uh, of course, we've also got this, which is the head of Brainiac. Now, as you can see here, I got the little uh, rubber strands that around that to hold that in place. Uh, basically, how it came, you know, uh, I took it off and then realized I didn't care for it, and I couldn't really get him to hold the head otherwise. So I put those back on, and it does kind of like just look like he's holding on to those uh, ripped out throat pieces. Now, in taking a look at the complete 360, again, there's those boots, very uh, almost Star Wars-y type of boots. He's got this big, beautiful red cape, and on the back of this one, we do have uh, a symbol, and of course it matches uh, the front symbol, but it's just done in gray, and I love how fantastic that looks. Uh, again, you see his head is just kind of hanging low. Uh, it seems like the weight of the world is on his shoulders, but uh, overall, it's just a fantastic figure. And like I said, to have them side by side, to basically see what time has wrought on the Man of Steel, uh, to take him from this idealistic uh, servant of the people to this just hunched over ruler who's trying to keep the peace. So it, it's a very well done set. It's amazing to look at. I know I keep repeating myself. Uh, again, in the head sculpt, we've got uh, that severe parting of the hair. We've got the nice S curl. Uh, basically, all the articulation is the same, except for uh, I don't believe the gloves rotate. If they do, I can't get mine to do it, and I'm not going to try messing with it. Uh, but other than else, the, rotate, the uh, articulation is basically the same. We've got thigh, or not thigh, but uh, hip, knee, nothing at the ankle. Uh, no bicep, we've got the ball jointed, shoulder, elbow, and then again that swivel head. So I'm not in any way disappointed in articulation because when you look at this guy, he doesn't need articulation, he's not meant to be articulation, he's articulated, sorry guys, uh, he's just an amazing figure on his own. Now, while I do believe that each one of these figures did deserve a review on their own, I did want to do them together. One, because I've got a heck of a backlog going uh, for reviews, and I wanted to get something out to you guys today. And two, they just they look amazing together. Uh, and of course, this is how they're displayed. But I really get, hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I was kind of all over the place in this review, but... They are amazing figures. If you get the chance to pick up either of these guys, I highly recommend that you do it. Um, I also highly recommend you read The Last Sun, or Red Sun, geez, Red Sun Storyline. Uh, you can pick them up on Amazon. That's where I got it. I think you can get uh, get it for like 10 bucks. I, uh, I've got the Kindle Fire, so that's what I download all my comics to. Uh, but I believe you can get the paper version as well or go into your local comic store. This is one of those great uh, graphic novels that every comic store is probably going to have at least one copy of it. Uh, and if they don't, they suck ass, go find a new comic store. Because uh, this is one of the greatest Superman stories ever told. And uh, the ending is just mind-blowing. I will say that. Well, guys, I want to thank you for sticking with me through this. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope that this uh, maybe maybe helps some people who are thinking about getting these figures make your decision. Uh, either way, if you're going to get it, if you aren't going to get, not going to get it. Uh, if you're not going to get it, though, I think you're crazy because these are amazing to have in your collection. But this, of course, is Res the Collector. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, and as everybody else says, rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and you have a wonderful day.